excited about being here at uh, Brewster Road Community Church with my brothers and sisters in Christ, um, understanding that we are together here in the spirit of Christ, in the spirit of love, in the spirit of faith, in the spirit of hope, trusting and knowing that above all, no matter where we are and what we're going through, that God loves us. And we are here today to worship him in the beauty of holiness and to learn more about him and in doing so uh, have better relationships with one another because you do know that it is because I know who you are and my interaction with you tells me how my relationship with God is. So we uh, welcome you here this morning, wherever you are in the Global Faith family, whether you're in Africa, whether you're in Florida, whether you're in Georgia, whether you're in Illinois, wherever you are worshiping with us from, especially those of you who have made it to the house of God this morning, we welcome you to the presence of God and understand this, that in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand is pleasure evermore. We are now beginning our worship and our praise team is going to come and join us wherever you are. Lift up your voice, shout a triumph unto the Lord and let God know how much you appreciate him. Let God know how much you love him and you are grateful that he has given you another opportunity this day. Amen.
time says free is what? Free, free, free indeed. indeed. We are Amen. free in Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. And because of that freedom.
thank the master. Yeah. I thank the savior. Yeah. I thank, thank God. Yes, God. Amen. If Praise you think about Jesus. Lazarus, when Lazarus was in the grave, Woo. when the master called him forward, yes. he said, take off the grave clothes. He said, set him yes. free because he who has been set free is free indeed. And sometimes we have to get up, get up, get up, yes. and get up out of our own grave because yes. we make graves for ourselves that yes. we want to stay in. And we make graves for ourselves that we were never meant to be in. And God is saying, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave on yes. today. Hey, y'all got me started on the day. Amen, amen, amen. We thank you so very much for being with us this morning, our global faith family. And this morning we are going to go before the Father and we're going to lift up prayer requests on behalf of um, our global faith family as well as on our community and um, our nation and then global needs. And so this morning we are lifting up um, Sister Allison. We're lifting up Mama Lizzie. We're lifting up Pastor and Sister Gibson. We're lifting up Mama Diane. We're lifting up Mama Mary. We're lifting up Retha Giles. We're also lifting up Gertrude and Sister Sophie. We're lifting her up on this morning. We are lifting up all of you that are undertaking the fasting and prayer for these two weeks. We started last week. We are continuing into this week. And so we are lifting you guys up. We ask that you guys would pray for BRCC as we continue through with the food distribution that we do every quarter. Pray specifically that God will send people our way that we can minister to, people that we can meet their physical needs, but also their spiritual needs as well. Pray for our women's conference that we are having coming up in May. One thing you may not understand or realize is that, you know, sometimes we want to wait to May to start praying, but how many of you know the enemy has already started launching attacks to prevent what's coming up? And so we need you to start praying now for that women's conference that are com that's coming up in um, May. We ask that you would pray for wisdom and protection for our BRCC children and their youth. And then also just pray that our relationships between BRCC and our global faith family will be strengthened as we uh, move into 2023. And so we declare that the year of 2023 will be a year of healing, a year of wholeness, a year of nothing missing, nothing broken. Amen. Amen. Let's go before the Father. Lord God, we thank you and we honor you. We bless you for you are Abba. Truly, you are our Father, you are our Redeemer, you are our Provider and our Supplier, God. And so now, Lord, we thank you for healing that is flowing, oh God. We thank you for healing that is flowing over arthritis. We thank you for healing that is flowing over hurt backs. We thank you for healing from migraines. We thank you for healing from diabetes. We thank you for healing from rheumatoid arthritis. We thank you for healing from depression. We thank you for healing from just loneliness, oh God. We thank you even now, oh God, you are moving on our, our behalf and whatever it is that we stand in need of, you are supplying. Father, we pray for Selma and Prattville and all of those that have been impacted by natural disasters. We pray for those that are going out and that are um, ministering to those communities even now, God. We ask a special prayer, oh God, for our pastor and our first lady as they are in our lady, Charsetta, as they are traveling on today and as they are traveling throughout the upcoming months, that you would be with them, that you would cover them and protect them. Father, I lift up my dear, sis, my dear sister Sophie unto you. I ask that you would be with her in a very special way. God, I lift up Mama Lizzie unto you, Mama Diane and Mama Mary, the mothers of BRCC, Mother Jeanette, that you would cover them and protect them. And in a very personal and special way, God, I lift up my brother Kelvin unto you. I ask 
that you would heal his body, oh God, as only you can do. Even when the doctors say otherwise, oh God, that you would step in, that you would make a way, oh God. And Father, even now, we thank you and we honor you for that which you are doing in BRCC. And we thank you and we honor you that you are calling in our brothers and our sisters and that you are setting us up in a way that we can minister, oh God, because of our past. Father, we thank you that these things are not happening to us, but they are happening for us, oh God. And we give you all praise and all glory and all honor, God. And we ask that everything we do may it be by your grace and for your glory. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise and worship team, would you come back and serve God's people? this morning, although you are gathered in this place, some of you came with some things that are wrecking your, your brain, some things that are troubling your heart. You came here this morning because you, you felt like by coming here, God would give you a, a, a sense of direction, that he would heal you in some kind of way. So this morning, we want you to be encouraged. Minister Trace, as you was praying, you were speaking about arthritis and different ailments that can attack our bodies. And there's some people that got a bad diagnosis from the doctor. I need you to know that God can still heal. Amen. I ask, is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too yeah, hard for no. God? And the answer is no. So this morning, be encouraged. But you got 
Today, I have invited three not only beautiful, but highly intelligent ladies on the stage with me. Amen, amen. And so I'm going to read our scripture reading this morning. Um, it's coming from 1 Corinthians 12. And we're not going to do, we don't have to do a responsive reading, but you guys can see it on the screen as I go through it. Um, my version is going to be a little bit different. Um, but we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 12, and I'm going to start in the 12th verse. And I'm actually going to go just a little bit deeper. Um, I'm going to go down through this a little bit. Um, but I want you guys to understand and realize that Brewster Road Community Church, our global faith family, our local faith family is not made up just of people that are behind the pulpit. There are so many of us that do different things behind the scenes. And so 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, reminds us that we are made up of many members. And sometimes we have a tendency to forget that when you see like, me or Pastor or Karen or Evenda or just the praise and worship team up all the time. And within the many members, sometimes it's hard to stay motivated. It's hard to stay encouraged. It's hard to keep moving. And so one of the things me and the young ladies behind me are going to talk about is how do you stay motivated? What keeps you moving? And so as we look at 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, I'm going to read this and then I'm going to join the young ladies behind me. And it reads as follows, 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, beginning in the 12th verse. And again, the version I'm reading from is different than what's on the screen. But it reads, Christ is like a single body, which has many parts. It is still one body, even though it is made up of different parts. In the same way all of us, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, male or female, have been baptized into the one body by the same Spirit, and we have all been given the one Spirit to drink. For the body itself is not made up of only one part, but of many parts. And so I'm going to skip down, forgive me Sister Evenda, I'm going to skip all the way down um, to verse 25, and it reads, And so there is no division in the body, but all its different parts have the same concern for one another. If one part of the body suffers, all the other parts suffer with it. And if one part is praised, 
all the other parts share in its happiness. Amen, amen, and amen. And so ladies and gentlemen, what I want you guys to do is give a big BRCC welcome to the ladies sitting behind me. If you would, I'm going to start all the way at the end. Introduce yourself to the congregation, please. Good morning. My name is Kenya Prue. I am 22 years old, and I am currently a full-time, well, I work full-time, also in school for full-time. Amen. Good morning. My name is Tierra Porter. I'm 23 years old, and currently um, I work in the healthcare field. Amen. Good morning, my name is Ja'Kayla Stone. I am 27 years old, <laughs> and I am a student physical therapist. Amen. Amen. Okay, so guys, here are the rules this morning. I'm gonna ask them questions, and I've given them the ability to pass on a question if they don't feel like they should answer or can answer. Um, in addition, they don't have to be what we consider Christian-like answers, but they have to be honest. And so we are um, asking the young ladies to be honest with us this morning and um, share their heart as we go through and ask these questions. For those of you that may have young people in the house, the um, Children's Church is now open, but I invite you guys to just stick around and listen um, as we talk to these young ladies. And so my very first question for you guys is, tell me, how are y'all feeling right now? One word. We'll start with Kayla. Stressed. <laughs> okay, Tierra. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> and Kenya? I'm all right. Okay, good. I gotta take my glasses off because y'all know I can't see up close. All right, so Kenya, tell me about your day. What's your daily routine like? So I wake up around like six o'clock, six fifteen, get ready for work. I'm at work about by eight fifteen. There from eight fifteen to five fifteen, then go home, start homework, then repeat. So what days do you go to school? Uh well I'm doing online classes, so right after I finish but right after I get out of work, I'm going back home, doing homework, doing papers, anything like that. Then just start the day off doing the same thing again. Kayla, what about you? Tell me what your day is like. Let's say on Mondays. <laughs> um, I usually wake up about 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning. I drive an hour and a half to school because I go to school in Montgomery, so I usually get to school about 7.30. I either study or relax for 30 minutes depending on what I have to do, but on a Monday, I'm guessing I'm rushing to get some last minute schoolwork done. Start class at 8, go to class from 8 to 12, get an hour-long lunch, and then go to class from 1 to 5. Drive back to <laughs> home for an hour and a half, so I get home about 7.30, sometimes 8 o'clock, sometimes later. Study, homework, get prepared for Tuesday, and start all over again. So rinse and repeat, right? Yeah. And one other thing um, the congregation may not know is, in addition to that, you also have another full-time job, which is what? I am a mom to a five-year-old. Amen. All right. And Tierra, tell us about your day. Um, I set my alarm for 5 a.m., um, but I usually don't get out to bed until 5.30. And I get ready for work. I try to get to work at least by 8. Um, I work the front desk until about 2, and at 2 I go back to the business office. I usually work with the trust accounts with the residents, so I pass out money, um, do whatever tasks that people put on me at work, and then I usually get off, well, lately I've been getting off at six, um, but I should get off at four. And afterwards, I go home, and I pretty much just go in my room and go to sleep. Because <laughs> you collapse, right? You're tired <laughs> at the end of the day, right? Yes. And so one of the things we always think is that the, um, the next generation or the younger generation 
like they don't work hard or they don't do anything or they stay around and play video games all day long um, and what you guys can see and this is just a sample and I don't know if we just have some really amazing young people at BRCC um, but we have Keep, we have younger, the next generation, that's getting up at 4.30 and 5, and they're not getting home until at least 6 or 7.38, and they're pulling, like, they're doing two and three jobs, so we have full-time, and then full-time work and full-time school, full-time school, and then being a mommy, and all of that, and so I imagine that sometimes that gets hard and that gets tedious. And so are there ever days when you guys want to give up? And Tiara, I'll start with you. Are there ever days when you want to give up? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Kenya? Most definitely. And Kayla? Absolutely. <laughs> and so um, what keeps you guys grounded, though? And Kayla, I'll start with you. Well... Like Kenya said, the support system, um, there's always faith. Um, but then just pressing towards the goal, like we know where we want to be when we finish, and this won't last forever. And so you just you put one foot in front of the other and you just keep moving to get where you want to go. Okay. Well, what about you, Kenya? Like Kayla said, a great support system, having people behind you that encourage you to keep going, keep pressing to where you want to be in life, and being comfortable, just don't stop now because yeah you see a little check but no you no, you want to see bigger so and tier what advice would you give someone that wants to give up i would say um look forward to tomorrow um sometimes the emotions that you feel in the present they are valid but you have to look at the bigger picture and keep going amen that's good that's really good because sometimes at least what I've experienced is sometimes we get so overwhelmed by what we see in front of us. Like we, we see bills or we see a bad situation or we may even see divorce or we only see bankruptcy. Um, we only see a health issue, you know, we only see that thing that's right there in front of us. And sometimes it's hard to look past that. Sometimes we have to look back and see where God has brought us from, but we also have to look forward and see where God is taking us to. And I mentioned earlier that sometimes we are so caught up in graves of our own digging, and we want to stay in that spot because even though it's not the best place for us to be in, it's the familiar place or it's the comfortable place. And what I mean by that is sometimes we get in a place where even though we're not happy in that place, we're comfortable in that place. We're, we're so used to not being happy that we, don't, we, we wanna stay there even if it's unconsciously. And for anybody to challenge us and bring us out of that place or pull us out of that place, it sort of goes against our nature. And so we wanna lay in that grave of our own choosing instead of coming forward and keeping moving. And I find it interesting that some people have the desire and the will to keep moving while other people just wanna stay there and lay there. And I hadn't figured out what it is because it'd be easy to say, it's because you're a believer the reason you keep moving but the reality of it is we have believers every day that are giving up we have believers every day that are throwing in the towel and so sometimes we have to ask ourselves what is that thing that makes us want to pull ourselves up or is it that we is it our faith is it what we believe in and surface answer is yeah you know like on the surface you can say oh yeah i'm a christian i want to pull myself up or i'm gonna pull myself up or i have enough faith to pull myself up but the reality of it is some days you just want to lay there like some days you just don't want to get up out of bed some days you just want to say you know what god i give up and i throw in the towel 
Some days you want to say, Lord, are you sure that you chose me? Are you sure that I'm the one? And you lay there and you lay there and you shed tears and you cry and you lay there a little bit longer. But eventually, faith kicks, kicks in. Eventually, hope kicks in. Eventually, your desire to go to Zillow <laughs> kicks in. Your, huh? <laughs> your desire to do better or have better or want better kicks in. And I think that's what these ladies are saying is, and Tierra put it better than I ever could, is you gotta realize that there is more than what you see directly in front of you. And so, how do you guys come back stinky thinking? Like, how do you come back that, that, that thought that, oh, I'm not good enough, or oh, I can't do this, or oh, I'm not like somebody else, or oh, this person is better than I am. How do you guys come back that? And Kenya, I'll start with you. Um, just keep encouraging yourself, yeah, I can't be this person, or I am this person, or I will be that, or I am that, so just basically. Just give words of affirmation to yourself. Words of I forgot, what's your degree? Nursing. Amen. Yay. And Jaquela, what's your degree? Doctor of Physical Therapy. Amen. And Tiara, what were you going to school for? Nursing. Hey. Oh, look at us, y'all. Okay, so y'all, when we, uh, amen, that's right. When we all like barely limping around here, we'll know who to call and say, hey, come help us out. <laughs> um, uh, Tierra, what's one thing you wish the older generation understood about your generation? Um, we live in a different world, different time. Um, yes, there are core things that keeps us the same, but we are more open-minded to change than the older generation. So certain things that they see that are bad or not as good or they don't approve of, they are things that we use to express ourselves. Okay. So what would be an example of something like that? Uh, like tattoos or what? Um, that could be one. I guess a broad genre would be music. Okay. And Kayla, what about you? What's something you wish the older generation, so my generation, um, understood about your generation? And remember, you gotta go home with me. I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> I think, like Tira said, we are, we have some fundamental similarities, but we're also different. And I think that a lot of the time, or a lot of the issue that I've noticed between the two generations is the way that we communicate. And so instead of being very firm and hard, you maybe just seek to understand and talk to us as if you actually understand. And I feel like we would go a lot further as far as understanding each other and getting things done together instead of, you know, just pouring out wisdom or telling us what we need to do and it falling on deaf ears. And what about you, Kenya? Um, not being so quick to judge. Like, if we go through things, help us um, get through it or talk to us. Don't try to, like, be teacher, 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 but be, like, you listen to us, understand where we're coming from. And... Um, just be that person, be that, that person we can always come to. And what would you guys tell the younger generation? And I'll start with you, Kenya. Um, not to grow so fast because you don't wanna, you don't wanna be that person, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you wanna be this grown person, you don't. I promise you don't. So. <laughs> and what about you, Kayla? What would you tell the younger generation? Just keep moving. 
high school is temporary, middle school is temporary, even undergrad and college is temporary. Just keep going, just keep moving, and don't quit. Okay, amen. Um, Tierra, what are some of the um, struggles or biggest issues facing your generation? I think some of the struggles that face my generation now, um, we have social media now, so we compare our lives to other people not knowing what's going on behind those screens. So I would say just be yourself. A lot of times things are not what they seem. The grass is definitely not greener on the other side. And you know, just keep God close and talk to him and he'll help you see and get you through the journey through life. Amen. So it's interesting, before we got up here, I asked them, you know, what are the biggest gen issues facing your generation? And Tierra, I don't think heard that, but she gave the exact same answer as Kenya gave. It's that social media and that looking at somebody on a screen and seeing their life and thinking they're perfect because of what you see on the screen. But one thing that I'm beginning to realize is it's not just their generation. Like even people in my generation, we look at people on a screen or we look at somebody's life and we think, oh, they have it all together or oh, they have this or oh, they have that. And so we, have, we each and all of us have a tendency to compare ourselves to other people or compare ourselves to what we see or what we imagine other people's lives are like. Not understanding that what we just read in 1 Corinthians 12 tells us that even though we are one body, we all have many parts to play. We're not all feet. We're not all hands, we're not all eyes. We are all different, but we each have a part to play. And so one thing we have to realize as Christians is we have to embrace our uniqueness. We have to figure out what it is that I bring to the table. What is it that God has created me to do? And based on that, then I do that to my fullest ability. Like, I'm not gonna get up there and sing like a songbird. I'm gonna leave that to Coretta and Jeannie and Derek and Sister Lee because if I get up there and do it, then we're gonna have an empty house, I'm just saying. Now, I can make a joyful noise, but I don't carry a tune. But now, if you ask me to talk, I'll talk your head off all day long, but don't ask me to sing. Don't ask me to play the piano. I, I, I can try, but that's not my gifting. I was so impressed with Andre just a little bit ago because he's singing with one hand and I don't know if you guys saw him, but he's up here playing the drum with the other and I'm like, what? Where did that come from? It's a gifting that God has given him. It's a gifting that he has. We all have our unique giftings. We all have our unique talents. God didn't call you to be like somebody else. Like God didn't call me to be like Sister Jenny. Now we are both supposed to have a measure of faith and we are both supposed to exercise our measure of faith. We are both called to love on God. We are both called to praise God. We are both called to have a relationship, not just religion, but a true relationship with him. But my relationship with him may not exactly look like Jenny's. I can almost guarantee you it probably doesn't unless Jenny wakes up in the middle of the night and be like, okay, God, what is it you're trying to tell me? Cause you know, that's sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, uh, okay, Lord, wh what's going on, you know? But that's my relationship with him. Other relationships may be very formal. One thing that I stand in awe of is that I can go into a Pentecostal church or I can go into a Catholic church and it's very solemn and very formal and they're singing notes that I didn't even know existed. And yet I can sit on the pew and I can still feel the presence of God. Now it's very different than where we're dancing and we're clapping and we're playing instruments and Karen's dancing around. 
but the presence of God is still there. And so sometimes we have to figure out how do we tap into his presence for ourselves. And so ladies, um, going back to you guys, Kenya, what's your favorite scripture and why? It is Isaiah um, 41.10 and it is... So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold, uphold you with my righteous right hand. So um, the reason why that is my favorite Bible verse is just because you may feel alone and you feel like no one has your back or you don't have that support that you really want. You're never alone. God is always with you. He will always be with you. And you never have to worry about you, basically you're by yourself. Amen. See, that'll preach. Y'all y'all might hear me say that again. <laughs> Amen. But somebody needs to hear that. And you guys are looking at ladies. They don't claim to be preachers. They don't claim to be prophetess, even though some of them are, and I'm not going to call them out. They don't claim to be teachers. But somebody needs to know that you're not alone, that God cares for you, and he loves you. And in his word, he says, fear not, for I'm with you. You know, there's this big um, faith over fear movement. And it generates from that, actually from that scripture, fear not, for I am with you. And so somebody needs to know that no matter what you're going through, because we're all either going through something, just came out of something, or about to go through something, but regardless, God is with us. He said, I am the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He does not change. Times may change. Situations may change. But God is with us. Jaquela, what's your favorite scripture? Okay, that's fine. And Tierra, you can start. Do you know yours already? Okay, go for it. Um, my favorite scripture right now is Romans 8.18. Um, and it basically says the pain that you feel now won't compare to the joy that's coming. Um, that's my favorite scripture. Um, Why? I kind of just found it like a year ago. But um, it's my favorite scripture because it keeps me going. Um, I kind of just look at it throughout the week when I'm feeling discouraged, especially at work. And it's like I said earlier, the emotions that you feel in the present you never know what the bigger picture is or why God is holding you back for something because he has something big for you. So you just have to remember that the pain that you feel now won't compare to the joy or the glory that's coming. Wow. Come on, we can do better than that. Give it up for it. Yeah. That's, that's deep right there. And I like that translation or the way she said it. The pain you're feeling now is not cannot be compared to the joy that you will receive. And... I wonder, now that she said that, you know, we're talking about keeping the motivation to keep moving or what makes you keep moving, what makes you keep going. And maybe it's because people don't understand that what you're feeling right now at this present time, at this present moment is only temporary. But if you keep going through and if you keep pushing through and if you keep moving through, there's a joy on the other side of it. And there comes a point in time where you get through that thing, this thing, whatever this thing is, and you get to that point of joy. And you're able to look back, though, and you're able to see why you had to go through that thing. And sometimes it's hard for us to realize or wrap our brains around the fact that that thing may not have been to destroy you, but it may have been to build you up so that once you're through it, you can pull somebody else through it. Amen. Are you guys enjoying this? I'm enjoying this getting to know them. Amen. Okay. So if you go a little further down in Romans 8, you'll find my favorite verse, which is verse 38 and 39. And it says, For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation 
will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ our Lord. So that's my favorite verse because, I mean, I have a five-year-old. I've, I've been through <laughs> a little bit in life now. But it, it's just a nice reminder that no matter what we do and no matter how many times we fall or no matter what happens in our life, God still loves us. And there's nothing, nothing, not even death, that can separate us from his love. Amen. Amen. BRCC, we should be encouraged. We have some strong young people um, in our midst, and um, they're going to have me up here crying in a minute. All right, so um, we are going to wrap up with this very last question. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can get a really good one. Um, all right, so what traits do you look for in a relationship? And then we're gonna rack up, we'll wrap up. And I'll start with Kenya. Just because you're on the end and we're working our way this way. <laughs> um, having a relationship with God, even though you're not always in church or you know, always in the Bible, at least you know who God is and you have faith in him. Um, also being a family person, you're always around your people, you're always around your family, um, respectful. Um, <laughs> um, have an open mind, have an open heart, ready to, well, being, want to communicate with one another, like, always is communication, so, yeah. All right, Sierra. Um, of course, a man of God. Um, I want somebody that's emotionally intelligent, um, I don't want to come home from a long day and you wondering why I'm acting a certain type of way. I want you to pick up on my vibe. That don't mean that you have the solutions to what's, what's wrong, but the comfort of you being there will help. Um, not only communication, I'm learning that comprehension is a good part. Communicating is one thing, but it doesn't matter if I'm talking to a brick wall. I need you to listen to me and I listen to you, and you tell me, you know, we work through it. Also, um, I guess I'm a little bit spoiled, so certain things that I've grown up with my dad doing for me, I feel like um, my partner should kind of do the same things, but I'm learning that they're not like big things, they're like bare minimum, like just being a gentleman. So those are things that I look for in a relationship. Um, my list looks very similar to Tears. <laughs> um, of course, absolutely, you're going to have to have a relationship with Christ. There is no question about it. Um, I love a kind man with a servant's heart. I don't know why. It's just one of those things. Um, honesty. I need honesty. Um, you don't necessarily have to be emotionally intelligent, but like she said, the willingness to communicate, to understand and be understood. Um, and then, yeah, I like a good handyman too, so <laughs> he got to be able to change my oil and fix my lights and all that stuff too. <laughs> And y'all, don't get it wrong now. The girl can change her own tires. And she can, like, I'm, I'm amazed. Like, there was one time somebody broke down on the side of the road, and she pulled over, like, to help them change their tire. It was a young lady. Um, but what I think what she's trying to say is, yeah, I can do it myself. But do I have to? Like, I can hold my own but I want somebody there that'll help me hold things down. I don't wanna have to do it all on my own. I can, but I need, I want somebody to help me along the way. Um, and so for our young guys in the audience, you've heard from the source, don't take it from your mama, you've heard from the source. We need you guys to have a relationship with the father. We need you guys to be able to fix a leak. If it happens, at least change a light bulb, right? <laughs> Learn to change oil in the car or change a tire. 
And then um, be able to open your mouths and communicate is what I'm hearing the young lady say. Amen. 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 And so give it up for these young ladies, please, BRCC. And at this time, I'm going to ask um, Minister Derek to come and if he would just pray over these young ladies. And for the other young ladies in the audience, if you would stand right now, I'm going to ask Brother Derek to pray over the young ladies in the audience. First of all, let's give uh, Minister Stone a hand for uh, this round table. Um, it's good to sometimes you change it up um, and to just talk because some, some people are out there and they're thinking it's, it's just them by themselves on that island. And when we think we're the only one on the island, it's easy for the enemy to defeat us. Yeah. Um, but when we realize that other people are going through the same thing and we can hear how they're getting through it, then it helps us get through it as well. I also want to thank you young ladies for coming up here and, um, and having the confidence and speaking with confidence. Um, to all of us, to your peers as well as to the adults, letting us know how you feel and how you think. Um, so at this time, let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, for this, Lord God, this setting, Lord God, and for allowing us to be able to listen to each other and to be able to express how we feel to each other. I pray right now for these young ladies, Lord God, that are, Lord God, on the stage, and for those that are in the audience, let them know, Lord God, that they're not asking for too much for a person that fears God. They're not asking for too much for someone to respect them. They're not asking for too much for someone to be a gentleman, for being to be able to communicate. And let them not lower their standards, Lord God, in terms of, Lord God, wanting a person that loves you. Let them know, Lord God, that even though they may work around people that tell them you're asking for too much, maybe they're, that they're asking for too little. I pray, Lord God, for, Lord God, wisdom. Continue to guide them and continue to keep them, Lord God. Lord God, continue, Lord God, to speak to them, Lord God. Protect them. Not physically, just alone, but emotionally, Lord God. There are times when, the, Lord God, that they are feeling stressed out, Lord God, that they are questioning why. And let them remind them, Lord God, in that moment, Lord God, that you are with them as they spoke today. And that it's okay if they sometimes they wild out in emotions, but bring them back to you, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, for everyone that is gathered in this room, young and old. Lord God, you see us when, at our most vulnerable moments. You see us when we break down in tears, Lord God. It seems like the message for today is about being encouraged, Lord God. Remind us, Lord God, to, to continue to look to the hills from which come with our help. Continue to remind us that you are, Lord God, our light and our salvation. And in you there is hope. I thank you for who you are. Not just what you've already done, but for what you're doing now and what you're going to do. I pray, Lord God, that more importantly, Lord God, beyond the earthly things that they, that they aspire for, I pray, Lord God, that you, Lord God, lead them and direct them in the path that you would have them to go in terms of serving you, Lord God. Because if they do that, then, Lord God, then I know that you're going to be with them always. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. And so as we close, think about what you've heard today. We're talking about the will to keep moving, the will to stay motivated, the will to keep going. The young ladies have told you that no matter what you do, there is nothing you can do that will separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. That God is with you no matter where you go. And if you would just press through this temporary situation, there is joy on the other side. And the reason we know that is because we serve a risen Savior. We serve a God that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. As a matter of fact, scripture tells us that because God loved us, he sent his only begotten son. Why? 
not just because, not so that we would be condemned, but because he loved us so much. Make sure your mics are off, please. And so because he loved us so much, he sent his son. And what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? It's the death, the, what's the gospel that we all believe in? It's the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. God loves you so much that we can't even begin to comprehend his love for us. And some of you say, you know what, I messed up. I took myself out of the game. I did this or I did that, and so I'm no longer worthy. That's not what his word declares. His word declares that while you were a mess, I loved you, and I sent my son for you to die for you. As Brother Derek was talking, he reminded me of the scripture that said, husband loves your, love your wives as Christ loved the church. And what does that love look like that Christ gave to the church? He gave his life for the church. He gave his life for you. And not only did he give his life for you, he didn't stay dead. He was buried. But in three days, he was resurrected again. And he came up and he said, all power. I have all power in my hand. And it is with that resurrection power that he is calling you to himself. He's not calling you to BRCC. He's not calling you to Tracy. He is calling you into a relationship with himself. And so at this time, if you don't know Christ, as Abba, if you don't know him as Father, if you don't have a loving relationship, I'm not talking about religion. I'm not asking whether you're Baptist or Catholic. I'm not asking whether you were born into the AME or the CME. I'm not asking if grandmama prayed for you all night long. I'm not asking about your religion. I'm asking about your relationship. If you don't have a relationship with the Father, if you can't say, if I lay down my head tonight and don't wake up tomorrow on this side of glory, I will wake up with him. If you can't answer that question, there are ministers in the house that would love to pray over you and pray for you. And so at this time, I ask if you don't know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, would you come? And if you don't feel like coming, could you at least raise your hand so that we can pray for you and pray over you? If you don't have a church home, we love to have you here at BRCC. For those of you in our global faith family, if you don't have a church home, we ask that you would unite with the church in your neighborhood. And so if you don't have a church home, would you come? And then finally, if there's any among us that has a special prayer request, if there's something you need for us to agree with you in prayer about, let us know, either by coming forward or raising your hand, and we would love to pray with you and pray over you and stand in agreement with you at this time. If there be anyone among us, amen. Iris. Okay. Any other, um, anyone else in the hospital that we need to pray over? Your heart? Amen. Melinda and her family. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Rita? Amen. Um, Mama Rita, anyone else? Mama Lizzie? 
Amen. If you would, bow your heads right now. Father God, we lift up Sister Iris. We lift up Melinda and her family.